it's that time of day when I'm like, oh, let's have a nap. Yeah, no reason to make the bed because, you know, it's time to take a nap. Comment below if you make your bed every day. So, we've lived like this for how many days? I think we're on four days now. It's time to get the curtains up, hang the TV on the wall, possibly put some sort of latch instead of just handles on the doors. I mean, privacy is important. We're not going to go like too far, but we're going to at least try to make it more functional and hide the garbage in the closet. The curtains are from Ikea. It's, they're velvet and they're Sanella. They're almost room darkening. They're like one below. Yeah, we were gonna do drop cloth curtains, but the sun shines in our room very early in the morning and I can't be having that. Well, and we needed a little texture and a little contrast because it's very, very white in this room. And this is in no way a room makeover. We're just doing some basic situations and then we'll bring you back later to like finish it all. Yeah, just a little, this is essentially like sneak peeks of uh, general maintenance. People keep saying they wanna see our room, so this is it, first <laughs> curtains. So we're gonna wind up hanging one curtain rod with three panels over two windows. So it's a one, three, two Z. <laughs> and I want them to pedal a little bit, so right about there on that. So I'm just gonna go right here on this shiplap seam. I would not um, assume that that shiplap seam is level. That's okay, we're gonna go with the lines that we already have. Okay. But you want it, so does that puddle enough like you were no, you talking about? Little, there you go, right there. Right there is good? Yeah, right there. There's these things on here, and that's where the rod goes, so I gotta make sure that when they're hanging in the rod, they're still gonna puddle. All right, zoom, zoom. <laughs> This pole is really long, but I think it works. Oh, gosh! <laughs> You're gonna need a magic eraser for that. Just, just, just puddle them how you want them. Okay, so um, I know where to put the hangers. need to be down hangers. just a little. Just a little so bit more? So just under that crack, so just over the thing. So it's a good I, thing that we did that because they yeah. would not have hung the same once we put them and on I the rod. I wanted them to be up higher, but this is just how long these are, so it's all right. It's okay, it's almost It still doesn't top. like cover the trim, and this ball needs to go as far over that way as you can, so that way I can open it as much as possible. Well, these will, this will slide on the hangers. All right, so. all right, that's good. I like it. Use caution when you're hanging your curtains because the plastic, I was dragging it across the wall and look at that fun line that's now on the wall. Bolt on later. I mean, we're basically professional installers. We're adequate. Adequate, adequate DIYers. DIYers. It's hot. Okay, you can let go now. I did. <laughs> like 30 seconds ago. Is the magic eraser fixing the scuff? Oh, it is, but it's taking some magical elbow grease. I'm gonna have to repaint? No, I mean, we didn't paint these walls. They came... This is pre-painted shiplap. Yeah, they came like that. <laughs> A couple of tricks for making your curtains look high-end. You want curtains that will fit on your rod. Grommets and tabs are cutesy, but don't look... They just look less expensive. That's all there is to it. I've used them before in the past, but... I like them like this. It's definitely an old school, traditional way to hang your curtains. And then you want them to hang just puddled on the floor. We're gonna have to get the steamer out. Yeah, we definitely gotta go pick up the steamer from the shop, steam out the wrinkles, and I'm gonna have to sweep up. Is that floor. enough puddling? I mean, yeah. so they're eight feet. It looks like our wall is a little higher than nine, even though it says it's nine on the schematics. Well, I mean, I blame our framer. Yeah. He well, was a, he was he was not the best framer you could have picked. He was good enough, adequate. All right, now we gotta do these two windows. <laughs> so we got the curtain song, and Jamie's like, "Hey, my nightstand doesn't match your nightstand." We haven't decided who's Look at that, nightstand. living out of a suitcase. <laughs> so I mixed together some milk paint here. We've got summer cottage um, and pantry door. It's about two parts pantry door to one part summer cottage. I hope it matches. I can't remember what the previous mix was. The first coat always looks like garbage, but the second coat will give us full coverage. And I will clean off the top and do some dark and decrepit to clean that up. It's got a little overspray situation. It was in here when we were spraying walls. Yes, it was. I tried to move it, but it happened. All right, what are the odds? We're about halfway through the video. What are the odds that Jamie gets some paint splatter on the bed, what is that called? The comforter, that thing? Or the curtains, or the floor? 
Well, if it gets on the floor, it's no problem because I can just sand it off and put more oil wax. We have the world's easiest floor maintenance here. But I don't, I don't, I'm being very careful not to fling it. I know. There's actually no flinging going on right now. It's not like we're in the studio when she's like, I'm going to paint eight things in eight minutes. Watch me. Well, milk paint is thinner, <laughs> so it does flip easier. So you got to be cautious unless you're where you can fling at will. All right, Jamie's over there getting the top ready to put some dark and decrepit on that. And then I've got the TV that we're going to hang. I'm just getting off all the overspray. I could sand it, but I don't want to create dust, so. So the frame is made out of old fence wood, and then this is old baseboards that came out of a home that we salvaged. And I just mitered the corners. We've got it in a video on a bedroom makeover we did two-ish years ago, somewhere yeah, we, in there. We can share the link. And we also have the buffet on how to get the chippy finish with the uh, apothecary peeking through. But I'm gonna put, I'm gonna go ahead and hang the TV first. And then I have this little bracket that I made, just a little piece of wood strip that goes above the TV that the frame screws into. Definitely it's more chippy than when we first did it. It looks uh, like the kids have taken something and scratched it. Yeah. Okay, so I have a stud here and a stud here because that's where the wall joined up. That's the bonus of not filling the nail holes in your shiplap. You can just see where the nails are on the studs. If you ever see it like stapled at an angle though, that means I kind of fudged it, so don't use that. Uh oh. When I initially hung this frame, we got asked a lot about venting, but it's not airtight and we didn't have any problems with our TV overheating. If you're gonna fit yours tighter around your TV, if you're gonna build a frame like this, I, what I would do is just drill holes in the top of the frame. They're gonna be back behind the frame anyway, so it's not gonna affect anything visually and it'll allow the TV to vent. Oh, that's way too high. Well. That's what, well, if you it's do it like- It's about the height of the door frame, yeah, which it, is what you were wanting. Yeah, that's too high though. I'm gonna bring put her the, down. Put the frame on it just so I can see it. But I remember last time that the frames hung and the, it added it's, like, it hung on the bottom. Yeah, right? that's too high. And it's messing with the cord, yeah. Yeah, it needs to go down. Sorry. No. This filming. I could sense that it was too high. I was going for it anyway. No, it's because you're But now the plug will work. <laughs> Look how gross this is. This is why you should always wash down your furniture because this probably was oiled a ton, which means I might get bleed through on the bottom because I did not scrub that, but I'll just make sure to only wax it because if I use a liquid top coat, it'll pull all that oil and grease out. All right. There we go. Why is that crooked? This TV is always crooked. <laughs> Everything in our life is crooked. I'm just gonna do the top with a little bit of dark and decrepit. Just gonna brush it on there, a nice even coat. You can wipe it back, but I'm just gonna leave it on. This is just gonna freshen it up and make it match the other nightstand. You can also lightly sand it too. This is truth time. Truth time. It fits over there pretty nice and sits oh, actually about is. right there and then it has a little gap in the back that I can... Yeah, that's... We can just do that you there. know if it's level? No. I just want to know. I feel like that's high enough. We can still hit the remote down on the bottom. Right here is where it sees it. Yeah, that's always important. Do not cover up where the remote gets seen by the <laughs> sensor because then you won't be able to change channels. I was actually thinking, you know that chippy blue frame that we have? We can use that to frame out the TV in the fan room because it's huge. Okay. Let's cut it down and it should be careful. Okay, so I've got my line up here. Got to go three quarters of an inch below it. Naturally, I'm going to eyeball that. Your eyeballs are so good. They're good enough. Good enough. We use so many measuring tapes that we're over it. <laughs> <laughs> and these were still crooked. So. I, I broke three measuring tapes. Well, 
We broke three measuring tapes. Yeah, I'm not really good at sticking this. Jamie likes to leave them all strung out and they get stepped on and so they when they get stepped on they don't I mean I don't do need to but I get in a hurry you know with the ship lap and the chop saw and... all right so we moved away from the gray curtains because they get dust on them it chipped a little bit naturally um, but I'm going to just use a sanding sponge, it's fine sanding sponge, just to distress it some more. You should seal your product when you're finished with it. I'm not going to because I've run out of time. Someday I might come back and white wax it. The reality is, I mean, I can wipe this down no problem and it's not going to get a lot of wear on the top. Most of the wear that comes on nightstands and dressers is on the top, which we've already finished. And I've actually covered with a grain sack because it takes a little while to cure and I don't want to mess around with that, so I just put this on here and then I'll take it off later, leave it. Being with that. No, I'm just taking off a little bit. Because I put Bond in this, the milk paint stuck really, really good in most places, so because it sat over the weekend, I'm having to push a little bit hard. Um, if I had sanded it right away, I probably should have just wet distressed it, but the longer it sits, the harder that paint gets. We just finished these nightstands a couple of days ago. It takes about 30 days for paint to cure completely. We love, well, I love to snack in bed. So I'm just gonna use these European grain sacks to kind of protect the finish, but also to add a little bit of texture. And it might be something that, you know, stays in here for a while. It's neutral enough that I can kind of put whatever I want on it. So I like to decorate in layers. So we decided to add this lamb print above the bed because it was really empty. I think in the future I might add some florals or maybe a taller headboard. For now it fills the space really good and adds a little bit of texture and color. As far as nightstand decor goes, I like to keep things really simple because like I said, it's going to wind up having my cell phone charging, snacks, lotions, things like that. So my sister actually gave me a welcome present of some fresh flowers. So I just transferred them over to some mason jars. I always like to keep a bunch of antique mason jars on hand. They're perfect for decorating, for storing things, for adding fresh flowers. And from now until spring, I pretty much buy myself flowers every week. It's how I get through the winter. And then I have these cute signs. We sell them at jrvhome.com. I'll drop a link for them. Um, and they say, oops, is it backwards now? Now you're good. Better together. So I'm going to put the better on one side and then I'll put flowers and together on the other. I just thought that was cute. because you, you can know. be the better. And then on my side of the bed, I can be the together. Okay. All right. <laughs> And Zeb likes fresh flowers too, so you can't forget him. Oh, yay. Mostly it's just symmetry. <laughs> I do like the colors on those if we have to talk flowers. If we have to talk flowers, yeah. In an all-white bedroom, you wouldn't think, oh, let's just add some all-white bedding. But I like to change things out seasonally. So in the like January, February, I'm probably going to have like cool blues and creams. And then we're going to move into spring colors and then summer, fall, whatever. And if you have a nice neutral bedding, then you can just change out blankets, a couple of throw pillows, you're good to go. If you're looking to get similar bedding, we do carry this set in king size on our website. These cute little chunky knit pillows on our website. This is actually a pillow I made from an American grain sack. We carry quite a few, so check back often to see which designs we have. Each one of them is authentic and unique, so you never get the same one twice. The kids always want to come in and watch TV with us, but I don't like being crowded in bed. They're getting huge, so we just put them on the end of the bed on a comfy bench. So this buffet and nightstand actually came from our old master bedroom. I love them, so I obviously wasn't going to replace them. We'll drop the link to the DIYs on how to get this chippy finish and how to do the TV frame in the link below. And then these are just candlesticks that Zeb made from, are these from Cottonwood, Zeb? I can't remember now, I, I think they are. I don't remember. But Either that or the wood from Texas that my dad brought. Yeah, I can't remember. The, the good news is you can recreate this yourself if you have a lathe. The bad news is we don't sell these. Those <laughs> are Jamie's. These are mine. There are some things Zeb makes that we don't make for everybody else. I'm gonna layer in some greenery. These are actually placeholders. I have some cute boxwood topiaries coming, but they didn't come in yet. These I got at Ikea a few years ago. I don't even think they sell them anymore. And then to keep the theme going, I have this awesome family of sheep that we sell on the website. And I've been trying to find the perfect place. And they actually fit well when you're decorating around a TV. You just have to make sure that none of your decoration comes above and blocks any of the screen. 
And then last but not least, this is probably something I'm going to be switching out. This is just a long chicken feeder that we sell and then some spring flowers. And as things change, I can pull the flowers out and add new things. The height is really good. It's long and skinny, fills a space, but again, doesn't block the TV. You guys might recognize this from our old um, master bedroom. This is something that we made for a waste on Wednesday. It's just extra crib rungs that we had. So I've made a ladder and some of my favorite like tattered quilts. And then of course, got some roosters in here because it makes it manly, right, Seth? Sure. Masculinity. It's just a really cool old grain sack from the Quaker Oats Company. It's full OPEP chick starter. Lots of loose ends around here. We've got to still black wax these doors so that it kind of hides the dust and gives them a nice seal. But wanted to show you the cast iron pools. These are awesome. You can see how big they are in my hand here. And it kind of adds a little masculine touch to uh, all the flowers. I like to, you know, it's all about balance, right? <laughs> Thanks for joining along with us as we start layering in decor in our master bedroom. There will be more videos because it's just the beginning. We have to finish doors. We've got to clean windows. We've got some other things I'm going to be adding in here, but we wanted to bring you guys along. People have been asking how I was going to decorate, so I thought that would be fun. So one of the things that I'm looking forward to is the closet build out. We have a couple of clothes rods in there now, just placeholders so we can get the clothes off the floor, but that's coming up here in the next little while. Lots of fun design elements coming your way. Stick around. We're going to have some photos at the end showing you all the items that we carry at jrvhome.com. Make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com for the paint and products we use. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY.